Let's have a play with the number 98 scrawler box. This box embraced a looser style of watercolour with the Jackson's Crystalline Watercolour Pigments. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the tips and tricks as featured in the scrawler zine. I'll be using the watercolour paper as featured in the box, a lovely thick stock with a slight texture, perfect for all wet mediums. I've prepped the spritzer and the water brush with some water ready to go and I've also grabbed two pots of water as we will be working with watercolours. Oh yeah, and some tissue for dabbing. We're going to do a little bit of painting using tonal values today, so let's start by activating the pigment. And we're going to use the palette to do this. Although the pigments do look yellow at the moment, this colour is actually a violet grey. This Derwent watercolour brush comes with a little squeezy activation button, so I'm going to use that to plop some water into the pigments. A few drops will do and then we mix, mix, mix. As you can see it starts off green but the pigments fully dissolve and then it turns into its intended colour of violet grey. Swiping some of that off into the other wells as we're going to add more water for a range of tones. The more water you add, the lighter the tone. It also seems to appear a bit more violet too as you add more water which is really interesting. You can also dab off the excess water to make it even lighter. And now we have a nice range of light, mid and dark. So let's have a play with these and get a little creative. These pigments are quite messy so try not to spill them anywhere by using a light hand. Also don't drop your paintbrush. Of course if mess is a real concern for you, lay down some scrap paper on your work surface and it's probably best to wear old clothes and some gloves to protect your hands. It's worth noting to avoid putting any damp brushes directly into the pigment pot as this will activate the pigments and make them clump together. I've started with a very light loose sketch as a guide and then the first layer will be the lightest. Not being too precious, we're going for that loose look. By holding the paintbrush to the side you can get some really nice thin lines. Also not pushing on that button, we don't want to release any more water into the paint. Dabbing off the excess water to really dull down that colour so it's nice and light. Wait for each layer to dry before you go in with more paint, otherwise the paint will just bleed into each other. So the next layer is going to be our mid-tone layer. So we want it to be slightly darker than the one before. Just to test before I lay it on the page, I've used a scrap piece of paper. Yep, looks good. Again, waiting for that layer to dry. Building up layers with different tones gives a really nice 3D effect. So when you use this in like a landscape scene or something similar, it's a really super effective way of giving the illusion of something big in the distance. On to our final layer, which is going to be the darkest layer. So no extra water will be needed for this. Just adding in a few dots for visual interest and for fun. And this is a really nice way to warm up your hands a nice, simple, effective way of using just the one colour and different tones to make something fun. While that layer dries, we'll clean off the brush really quickly. I wanted to erase those pencil lines that were still visible and that dot was still wet. So I'm showing my impatient nature here, but it's okay, it's fixable and it's okay to make mistakes. I want to add one final finishing piece to this before I do that, I need to clean and dry everything to avoid any stray pigments activating. So once that's dry, I'm going to sweep the page with a dry brush to get rid of the eraser dust and again any stray sneaky pigments. The 
using the Derwent spritzer, I'm going to spray the page with a light layer of clean water. And then using that dry paintbrush, I'm going to pick up the pigments and dust it over the page. And for some magic, spray a little more on to activate those pigments further. The more water you add, the more they'll bloom. Dabbing up the excess water to stop them blurring into each other too much. And you're left with a subtle pop of all those little pigments that make up this colour. And there we have it, a simple and fun exercise to use with these pigments. Until next time, keep scrolling!